Thank you, everyone, for coming to the Iridex Speakers Forum. I'm Joan Stauffer, and I manage clinical education programs. And it's my pleasure to present Dr. Andre Maya, who's going to share his clinical experiences using R577. Dr. Maya. Thank you. Uh, good afternoon. Can everybody hear me? Great. I'm from Brazil, uh, University of, uh, Federal University of Sao Paulo. And I, I have a pleasure to present uh, several cases that we have the opportunity to treat with this new technology, MicroPulse, the, with the yellow laser, to treat patients with uh, central serous retinopathy. Well, central ser serous retinopathy is an uh, idiopathic disease that typically affects young patients, generally from 20 to 50 years old. The disease is predominantly affects men. It's more common in Caucasians. It's a well-established disorder leading to serous retinal detachment, like here, elevation of the central macula. The acute form of disease is associated with the focal leakage at the level of the retinal pigment epithelium, as you see here, and also is demonstrated by fluorescein, right here. The disease is generally self-limited, with most patients having spontaneous resolution within th three months of time. Visual acuity is, the v is in the vast majority of the patients uh, resolves to 20, 30 or better without any treatment. But a small minority of patients may develop a chronic or progressive disease that results in visual loss. For patients without a spontaneous resolution, focal laser treatment or focal laser photocoagulation photodynamic therapy and micropulse laser are potential treatment options. What I present uh, uh, that micropulse diet laser photocoagulation with a yellow 577 nanometers is a safe procedure to treat central serous retinopathy. It has been also used, uh, this technology, to treat the macular edema due to diabetes. Well, in micropulse laser, the laser is delivered in pulses. In, for example, 10%, like this, uh, the cycle, uh, the laser stays on during only 10% of the time, and it produces less heating and less damage on the retina. So this is a case, a 36-year-old male that came to me with the reduced visual acuity on the right eye since January 2009. On eye examination, he had a 2080 on the right eye and 2020 on the left eye. The fundus examination presented an foveolar detachment on the right eye, and the patient was a physician. As you see here, the red free out of fluorescence and infrared, it's possible to see a darkish area in infrared correspond to the retinal detachment area. In the angiogram, as you see here in the early and the late phases, a small leakage right close to the center of the fovea, and, uh, the, and on the OCT spectral, as you see, a retinal detachment involving the fovea. This is the angiogram in the early phase. You see a uh, leakage right uh, close to the center of the fovea. So we, we did a laser treatment with the yellow micropulse iridex 577 using 0 0.3 milliseconds each shot in a data cycle of 15% and of 120 milliwatts, we did 215 shots in an area where detachment was. So we did a lot of shots right in the center of the macula. And each shot had 200 micro of size. I used the standard Meister uh, lens to, to, to do this treatment. Only 14 days after the treatment, the patient had improvement in the visual acuity, and now the patient was 20-20, partial. You see very subtle changes in the autofluorescence, and the completely resolved the detachment of the fovea. This patient had the disease for about eight months, and in just a couple of days, the detachment disappeared. As you see here, the angiogram, you show absolutely no laser burns. You can't see where the laser do was done and this com the, the fluorescence is much better than before. There's no leakage, just a window defect. 
So this is the second case I'd like to present. A patient, a 50 years old male. He came to me with a reduced visual acuity since August 2008, about one year before treatment. Uh, and the visual acuity on the right eye was 2050, on the left eye is 2020. The fundus, we could see a, a small detachment of the retina. Auto fluorescence, it's possible to see auto, a small uh, pigment alterations, and infrared, a darkish area where, where the detachment was. There was a very small detachment right close to the center of the fovea, and that is the angiogram. You see a small leakage right close to the center of the fovea, and a small detachment of the retina. As you see here, a small leakage. And the OCT, you see a small detachment of the retina and a small detachment of the RP. So this patient was treated with these parameters, also micro pulse laser iridex. 575, and 14 days later, it was possible to see no changes in the auto fluorescence or infrared. The OCT showed improvement and detachment of both retina and RPE, and the OCT showed reduction on the thickness of the retina, as you see here. This is before treatment, and this is after the treatment. And the angiogram, uh, no signs of laser burns. The fourth case is a 48 years old uh, male. He came with me with a reduction of visual acuity on the left eye one and a half year before the treatment. On the left eye, we he had a 2080 vision. This is the right eye. This is the left eye with the detachment of the fovea and RPE changes. In the auto fluorescence and infrared, we see clearly uh, alterations of the retina. And here we see hypo and hyper out of to spots in the center of the macula where the detachment was. In the angiogram on the top and ICG on the bottom, it's, pos it's possible to see a leakage in many points right close to the center of the fovea. In the late phase, it's more evident, the leakage, as you see here, in many points around the fovea. And the OCT shows a detachment of the retina right in the center of the macula. This patient was treated at that time with Avastin intravitreous and asked him to come back 30 days later to see the result. He came back 30 days uh, later with the same visual acuity, though Avastin did absolutely nothing to this SI. And the OCT, there's absolutely no change. This is before Avastin, this is after Avastin. You see the dates here, there's no change 30 days later. So the patient was treated with a laser micropulse. This is um, 471 shots in the center of the macula. And nine days after the treatment, the patient came back to 2060. There is small changes in the infrared, but no changes in the auto fluorescence after the treatment. And almost a complete resolution of the retinal detachment. This is a pre-treatment, and this is a post-treatment with the laser. I asked the patient to come back seven days after the treatment, and the patients referred no change in the visual acuity, but the visual acuity was a little worse, was 2070. And I see a little recurrence. Now, a, small detach a, a bigger detachment than before. So I decided to retreat the patient with the same laser, and I did 566 shots on the detachment, or detached the area uh, of the retina. 15 days later, the patient came with an improvement of visual acuity. As you see here on the retina, uh, it's completely flat. OCT, almost flat, with a reduction on the center of the thickness of the retina due to the chronicity of the central serous retinopathy. As you see here, before the treatment and after the treatment, you got a, a huge improvement. And the angiogram, you could see no changes on the angiogram, RP, uh, auto fluorescence or infrared due to laser treatment. So this is a case that was treated twice with this technique where no uh, changes in fluorescence, auto fluorescence, infrared, and the patient improved the visual acuity in a one year and a half history. This is an incredible case. Another case is a patient of 42 years old male. He came with me with a reduction of visual acuity on the right eye, this is not a, as, as a chronic as the other ones. This is only a, th a two or three months old history. 
he came with me with 2063 vision acuity on the right eye. On the fundus, we could see a small detachment of the retina and the leakage very close to the center of the fovea. It's a huge retinal detachment affecting the center of the macula. And we decide to observe this patient because it's only two months. So I don't want to treat the patient with uh, only two months of history. So wait a little bit. Sometimes the patient get better by its own. And I wait 45 days and the patient got worse. As you see here, it's much higher than before. So I decided to treat this patient with 448 shots in the, on the detached area, uh, retina. And for, uh, 13 days later, the patient has no changes in visual acuity. But as you see here, this is before treatment on the top and after treatment and down here, you see there is no leakage in the angiogram and no scars produced by the laser. This is the before treatment and after treatment on the top, as you see a reduction in the thickness of the retina is remarkable. This is the old CT on, on, on top of, this is the pre-treatment and the bottom here, this line is the after the treatment, it is a reduction on the thickness of the retina. Just only 13 days after the treatment. It's a huge detachment. It takes a long period of time to get it to flatten it down. I haven't seen this patient after that. That's why I can't present after one month. So this is a sixth case. Uh, this is a 40 years old female. She has lupus. She had a kidney transplant. She uses steroids and cyclosporine. She came to me with a reduction of visual acuity on the left eye since February 2009. On the left eye, the vision was 2050. As you see here in the radio-free autofluorescence and infrared, there is small subtle changes on RPE, and we believe that's due to her medical condition on the right eye and on the left eye. So this is the angiogram for the right eye on the top and the, on the left eye on the bottom. As you see here, three small spots of leakage, uh, one very close to the center of the macula. What I did here is a micropyrimetry. Micropyrimetry may help us to understand a little bit more about the effect of this laser. As you see here, the reddish means less sensitivity and the greenish more sensitivity. This patient has a central fixation and a poor sensitivity in the center of the macula, be just before the treatment. Those are the numbers that you see here, 10, uh, 6, so this is a, a reduction of sensitivity in the, in the center of the macula. The OCT present, show us a detachment affecting the center of the macula, especially inferiorly. So what we did is uh, we, we treated this patient with 709 shots on the detached area, uh, de uh, retina. 30 days later, the patient improved a little bit the visual acuity. This is the right eye. On the left eye, you see that in this patient, we could see small changes, and we think this is due to laser treatment. This is the angiogram, less, absolutely less leakage than before treatment. But the interesting thing here, on the autofluorescence, right here, we see small areas of hyperautofluorescence, and we believe that's due to laser. And why it didn't happen to other patients this, and this patient? We believe that this patient had a medical condition that may predispose a more sensitivity to the laser. He probably, she has a more fragile, I would say, RPE, and the same amount of laser caused on her small damage. But as you see here, the OCT is, is a, a remarkable improvement in the thickness of the retina, but it's still a little amount of fluid. And this is the micropyrimetry after the treatment. As you see here, before treatment and after the treatment, there is a remarkable improvement in sensitivity. There's still a, a small reddish area in the center where the retina is still detached. Well, Micropulse, we think, is a very effective laser treatment for chronic CSR. We believe uh, they may cause less or no damage on the 
the retina. I think we, knew, we have to do new studies. Long-term results has to be analyzed. The, we would like to have no, absolutely no scars on the retina with this treatment. We believe some patients may respond with very well. Actually, most of them respond very well in, within 30 days of treatment. But some patients require more than one treatment in a safe range. I think that's what I would like to present those cases. I'm here if you have any questions, I would be glad to, to answer the questions. Thank you. Thank you.